Hey, welcome to my channel. This is Rainer from Rainier Books. And last week there were two prizes, two great awards that many of you, many of us follow on Booktube. Uh, two awards that have presented their long lists for... So award season has started really to 100% now because we have, we got 29 books that were mentioned last week that will win two of the most prestigious awards. And in this first video, I want to speak about the uh, Booker Prize in translation, which covers books that were written in a different language than English and translated into the English language. And one of them is going to win the International Booker in translation of 2022. Um, I could have made it easy and could have made a very fast and quick reaction video and just read all the um, summaries that are to be found on different web pages. But I sorted them books. I uh, sort of looked at their, the summaries and looked which book is interesting me the most and which book is interesting me the least. So I will present them in that order without having read them. But, but right now, the books that I'm presenting here are in the order of interest, so to speak. And uh, the battery was exhausted, so I had to change the battery. So here is my list in the order of interest, so to speak, from 1 to 13, actually from 2 to 13, or from 1 to 12, because the first book that I'm telling you about now, I already read, and I buddy read it last year with Rachel. And this was Heaven by the Japanese author Miyako Kawakami, translated from the Japanese by Samuel Bett and David Boyd. This is a unique story, a very haunting story, about bullying of uh, two Japanese teenagers, a boy and a girl. And at the same time, Kawakami is discussing Nietzsche's theories of the evil and discussing is evil done on purpose? Does evil have a goal or is it just arbitrary? It's a great novel. It's something, probably one of the favorites because Kawakami is maybe one of the greatest authors of our time. Um, but now the books how they, that I haven't read and how much I'm interested to read them. And I start with the most interesting book for those of you who might click off the video and go to somewhere else. I would say the most interesting book to me in that right now, after the description, is Paradise by Fernanda Melkor, or Melkor, translated from the Spanish by Sophie Hughes. And Fernanda Melkor is a very interesting young Mexican author. Inside a luxury housing complex, two misfit teenagers sneak around and get drunk. Franco Andrade, lonely, overweight, and addicted to porn, obsessively fantasizes about seducing his neighbor and attractive married woman and mother. Meanwhile, Polo, the community's gardener, dreams about quitting his grueling job and fleeing his overbearing mother in their narco-controlled village. As each face the impossibility of getting what they think they deserve together, Franco and Paul hatch a mindless and macabre scheme. That has made me very curious. I'm interested in Mexico. I'm also interested in the society of Mexico, which is so much haunted by narcos and the crimes that they commit each and every day in almost every part of society. So this has sparked my interest. As the second book, which is also translated from the Spanish, this is called Elena Knows by Claudia Pinheiro, and it's translated from the Spanish by Francis Riddles. I have never read Claudia Pinheiro, but apparently she's one of the most successful crime authors uh, in South America, and she's, I think, the third most successful Argentinian author ever. And she writes crime stories. After Rita is found dead in the bell tower of the church she used to attend, the official investigation into the incident is quickly closed. Her sickly mother is the only person still determined to find the culprit. Chronicling a difficult journey across the suburbs of the city, an old debt and a revealing conversation, Elena knows unravels the secrets of its characters and the hidden facets of authoritarianism and hypocrisy in our society. And I'm also much interested in Argentina, how this land has sort of changed from the uh, time in the 70s when there was a military dictatorship. I remember when I was a stupid little, not little, but a boy, when I was a stupid teenager boy, I was so fascinated by the world championship in Argentina in 1978, not realizing that it was the showcase for a fascist dictatorship like the Beijing 
uh, Olympic Games this year were and are. The Paralympics are still going on. I think they finished today. The third book that I really would like to read is called Phenotypes, and it's by Brazilian author Paulo Scott. Translated from the Portuguese by Daniel Hahn. In this complex tale, two very different brothers of mixed black and white heritage are divided by the color of their skin as racial tension rises in society and a guilty secret resurfaces from the shared past. Paulo Scott here probes the old wounds of race in Brazil, of a black identity independent from the history of slavery. Exploratory rather than didactic, a story of crime, street life and regret as much as a satirical novel of ideas, Phenotypes is a seething masterpiece of rage and reconciliation. What counts for Argentina, that I'm very interested in the society, contemporary society of this country, I'm also interested in Brazil. And especially also the question of racism in Brazil, which I heard from British rapper Akala. Uh, I did a review about Akala's amazing book, um, about his growing up in, 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 a, in a racist society of the United Kingdom, um, which is actually one of my most popular reviews, if not the most popular single review that I ever did. And Akala said uh, in an interview that I saw of him later after reading the book that Brazil is a lot more racist than, for example, the United States, and you almost can't believe that. And, and that also, combined with Akala's judgment about Brazil, where he has been, and this novel I'm very interested in. The fourth one is a bit different. Uh, I'm also keen to read that. It's called The Book of Mother by Violaine Usman. It's from France. It's translated from the French by Leslie Camille. Beautiful and charismatic Catherine, aka Maman, smokes too much, drives too fast, laughs too hard, and loves too extravagantly. During a joyful and chaotic childhood in Paris, her daughter Violaine wouldn't have it any other way. But when Maman is hospitalized after a third divorce and breakdown, everything changes. As the story of Catherine's own traumatic childhood and coming of age unfolds, the pieces come together to form an indelible portrait of a mother as irresistible as she is impossible, as triumphant as she is transgressive. Mothers are very important to all of our lives. And we sort of meet them in different positions. We have them as our own mother. My mother passed away two years ago. We have them if we are married to a woman. Uh, and have children. We have them as the mother of our children. We have grandmothers who are the mothers of our fathers. So they play a central role in all of our lives and in, in our society. And this seems to be a very interesting um, variation or story on the sujet of motherhood. The next one I'm still interested, really interested in reading. This is one of two Korean books in this selection of long list. Love in the Big City by Sang Yong Park from Korea, translated from the Korean by Anton Her. Young is a cynical yet fun-loving Korean student who pinballs from home to class to the beds of recent Tinder matches. He and Jahi, his female best friend and roommate, frequent nearby bars where they suppress their anxieties about their love, lives, families and money with rounds of soju and freezer-chilled Marlboro Reds. In time, even Jehi settles down, leaving Young alone to care for his ailing mother and find companionships in his relationships with a series of men, including one whose handsomeness is matched by his coldness and another who might end up being the great love of his life. Love in the Big City by Sang Yung Park from Korea. I'm really interested. Now we're getting closer to the books that I might not read and I'm not so interested in. Still on the verge of it is the next one, is Tomb of Sand by Jitanjali Shri <clears throat> from India. And I actually couldn't find out in which language the book was written. Um, sorry about that. Uh, if it was Urdu or if it was Hindi. It was nevertheless translated by Daisy Rockwell, and I could find out that Daisy Rockwell translates both from Hindi and Urdu. So, we don't know. In northern India, an 80-year-old woman slips into a deep depression at the death of her husband, then resurfaces to gain a new lease of life. Her determination to fly in the face of convention confuses her bohemian daughter, who's used to thinking of herself as the more modern of the two. 
To her family's consternation, Ma then insists on traveling to Pakistan, confronting the unresolved trauma of her teenage experiences of partition. Despite its serious themes, Jitanjili Shri's light touch and exuberant wordplay ensures that Tom, Tomb of Sand, sorry, remains constantly playful and utterly original. This could be interesting to me, but I'm not so sure. I would call these books on the verge of Rhinus TBR. I have to talk about TBR in a different video later on. Next one, also on the verge. It's from a neighboring country. If we go to the West, um, I could make a bad joke, I'm, I'm not doing it. A NATO country in the West, which is Norway. We are not a NATO country, we're neutral in Sweden. A new name, Septology 6 to 7 by John Fosse, or Jan Fosse, as they say in Norway. Translated from the Norwegian by Damien Searles. Asle is an aging painter who lives alone on the coast of Norway. His only friends are his neighbor Oslaik, a traditional fisherman, farmer, and Beyer, a gallerist who lives in the city. There, in Björkvin, lives another Asle, also a painter but lonely and consumed by alcohol. Asle and Asle are doppelgangers, German word actually, two versions of the same person, two versions of the same life, both grappling with existential questions. Written in melodious and hypnotic slow prose, this is the final installment of Fosse's Septology, the major prose work by the, quote, Beckett of the 21st century, according to the French paper Le Monde. Still on the verge, a third book, second Korean title, also translated by Anton Herr, Cursed Bunny by Bora Chung from Korea. Korean author Bora Chung uses elements of the fantastic and surreal to address the very real horrors and cruelties of patriarchy and capitalism in modern society. Anton Herr's translation skillfully captures the way Chung's prose effortlessly, effortlessly glides from the terrifying to the wryly humorous. Well, maybe, maybe, um, but more no than yes. And now comes the books that are not interesting to me. They may, might be beautiful, they might be amazing books, but they're just not interesting to me and my TBR is so, so long. So here comes Happy Stories, mostly, by Norman Eriksson Pasaribo from Indonesia. And this is translated from the Indonesian by Tiffany Tsao. Inspired by Simon Veil's Concept of decreation and drawing on Batak and Christian cultural elements. In happy stories, mostly, Pazariba puts queer characters and situations and plots conventionally filled by hetero characters. In one story, a staff member is introduced to their new workplace, a department of heaven devoted to archiving unanswered prayers. In another, a woman's attempt to vacation in Vietnam after her gay son commits suicide turns into a nightmarish failed escape. And in a speculative historical third, a young man finds himself haunted by the tale of a giant living in colonial era Sumatra, which is the description for the book Happy Stories Mostly by Norman Erickson Pasaribo. Also not on my TBR is the next one, More Than I Love My Life, by former or earlier uh, international translation booker winner David David Grossman or David Grossman from Israel, translated from the Hebrew uh, by Jessica Cohen. On a kibbutz in 2008, Gili is celebrating the 19th birthday of her grandmother Vera, the adopted matriarch of a sprawling and tight-knit family. But festivities are interrupted by the arrival of Nina, the mother who abandoned Gili as a baby. Nina's return precipitates an epic journey from Israel to the desolate island of Goliotok, formerly part of Yugoslavia. It was here, five decades earlier, that Vera was tortured as a political prisoner. And it is here that the three women will finally come to terms with the terrible moral dilemma that Vera faced and that permanently altered the course of their lives. Also not on my TBR, maybe on yours is the next book. It's from south of Sweden, also a NATO country. We're not a NATO country. It's called After the Sun by Jonas Eika, translated by Sherilyn Helberg or Helberg, I don't know. After the Sun opened portals to our newest reality, haunting the margins of a globalized world that's both saturated with yearning and brutally transactional. Under Cancun's hard blue sky, a beach boy provides a canvas for tourists' desire seeing deep into the world's underbelly. 
An enigmatic encounter in Copenhagen takes an IT consultant down a rabbit hole of speculation that proves more seductive than sex. Meanwhile, the collapse of a love triangle in London leads to a dangerous hypnotic addiction. And in the Nevada desert, a grieving man tries to merge with an unearthly machine. And the next one, which is absolutely down on my list, which is the least book I'm interested in, might be your book that you're most interested in. I absolutely could understand that. It's from a Nobel literature winner, a Nobel laureate. It's from the Polish writer Olga Tokarczuk, and her new book is called The Books of Jacob, translated from the Polish by Jennifer Croft. In the mid-18th century, as new ideas begin to sweep the continent, a young Jew of mysterious origins arrives in a village in Poland. Before long, he has changed not only his name, but his persona, visited by what seemed to be ecstatic experiences. Jacob Frank casts a charismatic spell that attracts an increasingly fervent following. In the decade to come, Frank will traverse the Habsburg and Ottoman empires as he reinvents himself again and again. He converts to Islam and then Catholicism, is pilloried as a pilloried as a heretic and revered as the Messiah and wreaks havoc on the conventional order with scandalous rumors of his sect's secret rituals and the spread of his increasingly iconoclastic beliefs. And that makes the list full, 13 books, longest booker. You know what I prefer, you know what I want to put on my TBR, first like five maybe six books. What's on your TBR? What is your ranking? Which book have you already read and which do you want to read desperately? Tell me in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching this video. The next to come might come very soon and it's uh, the same sort of um, description of the Women's Prize long list which consists of 16 books but this time I will make it like from from my perspective, from 16 to 1, from the least interesting to the most interesting. So watch that video and watch all the videos on my channel. Thank you very much for today. Have a great Sunday. Bye-bye.